Welcome or welcome back. This is Pairs Well Knitting. I'm Jennifer, and this is the Knitting Podcast, all about knitting, yarn adventures, and travel. Thank you very much for joining me today. In today's episode, we are featuring the very first holiday special ever. This is the sparkly Christmas special. Thank you so much for joining me today. In the beginning half of the video, we will be going over finished objects all finished objects, which I'm really proud of and excited to share. Uh, no whips, because we are trying to be a little more concise in today's episode. But the latter half is a sit, sip, and knit, if you will. And it goes through all the different holiday things, activities that I've been doing to prep up and enjoy the journey into the holidays. So if you wish, watch one half, watch the entire thing, it's as you wish. We will get into all of this today. So of course, to kick off our sparkly Christmas special, I am wearing sparkles. This is the Cinch Shrug designed by Jackie Rose. And I don't think the sparkles are shining through on camera as they are in real life. Wish you were here with me. Um, this is a gorgeous and second scent shrug that I have knit for the Holiday Shrug Club Cal. The no long that I'm running until the end of the month, not too late to join. Details will be found below, of course. I feel like I've chatted your ear off in the past about this. Um, this shrug, is a fitted shrug. Uh, it is a pay for pattern by Jackie Rose. Beautiful, I've done it smidge, smidge of mods and I will get into that. The yarn that I've used, <clears throat> really economical. I've done a Drops Air. This is in the colorway white, off white, off white. Um, it's the first time that I've used Drops Air it's a fluffy delight. I have no idea how it will wear over time, but knitting with it <laughs> was a marshmallow dream. And I paired it with a fun sparkle thread. This is the Lang Lame thread or yarn. Um, it is a synthetic that is under the colorway 38. And I looked into it, someone had asked, it's platinum, not gold. So, you know, we're, uh, we're always one step up, <laughs> of course. Um, it was a super, obviously, simple and speedy knit, although I did try to slow down on it to enjoy the entire process because they're just such a fun little easy knit to do. And I have been wearing this all throughout the holidays. Um, it's been great we will take you right through how I've been styling my scent shrug. So I'm just gonna get open here so that I'm not gonna miss any details. What I've done is I have filmed the scent shrug, me wearing the scent shrug with things that I have in my closet because one of my joys of knitting, of course, is making things that I wear, that I'm excited to wear, and that fit in my wardrobe well, that bring it extra fun, flair, and uh, I like trying to push myself out of my comfort zone as well. Um, I could go on, uh, but I feel like I don't have like one style that I go for every time, although, you know, I do do a lot of blouses with the pop collar, which is just, it's a joy to me. I'm an 80s kid, so that makes sense. Um, but I do, I do like kind of dressing how I feel that day or the activity that I'm doing, which I don't need to fit myself in a box. Okay, stop. I'm just rambling because I'm all super chatty chats today. So what I've done, sorry, in my videos, <clears throat> is I've gone from casual to a little more fancy into like a full on a holiday fun. So let's go, let's talk about the styling. All right, the first look is a super chill look. This is just a cream um, fitted turtleneck. 
I've got it paired with a really classic jean and of course I'm putting on the little um, sling backs that I have that I just feel again offer that super classic look. That alone is one of the go-to looks for me but then I add the glittery sparkly shrug. I'm super digging the cream on cream and I feel like it allows the little glitters to pop. I've paired it in all of these little styling videos with my classic pearls and a little ovally gold hoop. The pearl and the gold, I know it's super matchy match. I'm digging the matchy match hard. I'm loving it. Um, and I am realizing that in the videos you're gonna be seeing that I'm pulling the cinch shrug down to the bottom of my bust. I've been wearing it up a little higher since. The second look is a little more fancy. We have a fitted um, linear, if I can, lace camisole. I've got a tight skinny jean, trying to keep in the skinny jean because we all have them in our closet, a pan boot. And now I've got a little uh, blazer that I've put over top with little gold buttons. Again, the gold accents. That is going to pair really nicely with the gold in the shrug. This look obviously was inspired by Jackie Rose. She has such gorgeous style and she's also not, you know, she doesn't put herself in a style box, but during the cinch shrug beginning of the Saturday, Friday and Sunday shrugs, she was super into a blazer look. And this, this is definitely a look inspired by her. I love the contrast here of the cream matching the gold and then with the black. I would wear this if I was working, <laughs> which, you know, I'm not sad to say I'm not right now. Um, I would wear this to work. This is, this is an easy look to put together um, and even swap out the little camisole with obviously like an opaque t-shirt or little v-neck would be great. The next um, styling piece that I put together is, <clears throat> again, I'm trying to use items I have in my closet and using them in multiple ways. So same camisole, the linear, lacy, translucent camisole. I've got a really like fake palazzo crepe pant on. I'm putting it with just a classic black pump and that's already a look. We're happy with this, but we're winter. We're in Canada, we're in Toronto, it's chilly here. So shrug gets pulled out. Here's what I'm really digging about this look. So I love the contrast again of the cream and the black. However, I didn't mention it in the last bit, the lines of the one by rim ribbing from the shrug that almost go into the lines of the camisole, I'm digging hard. There's a lot of pattern going on, but it's kind of chill, but exciting enough. It's offering a lot of texture. I mean, we're digging hard. We're really enjoying it. This is, this is a fancier look. <clears throat> this is my last look that I've put together. This is a ridiculous, fun dress that I got from a Cheeky Poo that um, sells vintage secondhand items that are just gorgeous quality. Uh, this dress I bought last year, around the holidays actually, it's a velvet, I call it a dull dress. It's just fun. It's not my age and whatever. I'm enjoying myself and I always have in this dress. It's a little short, so we're careful kind of what we usually put with it, but we're going out. I put it together with a um, neutral suede um, slide. And obviously the sit shrug is going over top for a little extra warmth a little extra fun and sparkle and we're having a good time putting it on still not pro star but once we're on we're good okay look at the face like <laughs> so enjoying this look it's just a good time this would be nice for obviously going door to door because i'm not having to put on a thousand layers i have bare legs here easily could put it with some tights some boots pumps you name it that is the Sin Shrug styling. It is so unlimited with how and what you do with it. It's a good time. If you haven't joined the Knit Along yet, I really encourage you to do so. We have our prizes that are going to be drawn at the beginning, very beginning of January. And I hope you join if you haven't yet. 
Thank you for all that have already started hashtagging Holiday Shrug Club Cow. We hope to get more out there too. Amazing. Okay, we're getting into now finished objects and I have to say, I'm jazzed about this. So we will try to be as efficient as possible. <clears throat> the first is, believe it or not, hold on to your socks because they're gonna get knocked off. The sweater, breaking the sweater curse. What? Okay, he's here, she's here. And just, you know, all the like bips and bobs are coming out of course on camera because it's a dark knit. This is the sweater that I've been working on since August. August, for the love of my life. This is a freestyle sweater that I've created that is a raglan detailing. It's so hard to see on camera because she's dark. This is a two stitch raglan where I've done lifted increases on either side of the raglan. And I'm in love. I'm loving it hard. And I am sad that the little bits and bobs are showing up as kind of crummy on screen, but I do like, like, I don't know if you could see this too. There's a little like field matter from, you know, the sheep, where the sheep were, the sheep's home. Um, this yarn is from Camden, Maine, from the Cashmere Goat. I've talked about it a million times. It is the door yard yarn yarn. Um, and I don't know if anywhere else has it. It was super local to them. I think I bought almost every last skein of black. I still have two skeins left, believe it or not. I very much overbought, but we are fine with this. The sweater construction, um, more than just the raglan, I did a short row uh, situation in the back to raise the neck, of course. I did do, which I was so jazzed about, German short rows in the front. And obviously it's hard to tell anyway in the dark, but I feel like I did a good job. <laughs> and this is a new style, city noises, sorry. Okay, um, this is still a new style of doing short rows for me. I was always a wrap and turn girl. So now that I'm doing them and they're turning out really well, I, I think I'm a convert. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, <laughs> I won't get into 50 years of convo on this, but I re-knit the body quite a bit to get an ever more fitted fit let's ease it was super parachutey we went through a number of fittings and rip outs and same with the sleeves they were very much balloony and they have since been reduced they're still white ish they're not obviously you know cinched on the love my life's arm but uh they're they're doing better i've got a little ribbing just a one by run ribbing at the end and i bound off with a in pattern bind off so where i did a knit a pearl and then cast off knit pearl knit pearl so um yep and it's created just a really <laughs> you could see really smooth clean finish this is blocked love my life is out for a lunch right now and i'm hoping to podcast and wrap this and pretend that he's kind of forgotten about it he'll he'll be lovely enough that he'll He'll put on the show when he opens the sweater on Christmas. That is a sweater that's breaking the sweater curse. And first sweater I've ever knit for the love of my life. And I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. That's, that's what I have to say. Okay, next. These are a little like cheaty-esque, but I'm going to go over them because I've done some things. <clears throat> So first, this is the little freestyle beanie that I created and showed in the last episode. Uh, I won't get into all the details. Basically, it's just a uh, bottom up construction of a toque, a beanie uh, with four different sets of decreases as you get into the crown. The difference, oh, and this was um, two strands of Sinus Garn in alpaca. Uh, I think it's a discontinued colorway. I bought it years ago on sale. And the new addition is that I brought the brim up. So I did a sewn brim or a folded brim, I think it's called. And I just used a tapestry needle um, while I was watching Seinfeld <laughs> because, you know, we've already seen the full entire gamut of Seinfeld, I think twice. And now we're doing it for a third time because 
it's amazing. Um, it also allows me to do things that I can, you know, have to think about and not super pay attention to everything um, that's going on. Anyway, so yeah, I love, I love, I love. Um, I haven't reblocked to get to get the bottom nice and crisp, um, but I think I will, or I'll just do like a steam press with a little like wet cloth or towel underneath or like between like sandwiched um, to give it that crisp edge. Super fun, great color and uh, freestyle beanie. The next object that's somewhat a cheat is the Bug of War beanie that I've modified. First of all, I want to thank the entire knitting community that reached out either through here, through YouTube with comments um, when I was doing my whips, uh, the whip parade episode or on Instagram to change this from a hat. It was originally a hat that was designed or is designed by Alison Rendell. I believe, sorry, I don't want to get the name wrong. She's at Feral Knitting. Hold on, sorry about that. A book of probably Alice Arenda, it is. Uh, she designed this year's, um, goodness, so many sirens, I'm sorry. She designed this year's uh, Shetland Wool Weeks beanie. Um, I will get into all of those details because I did last time, but the difference is I blocked it. So I feel like she's looking very pretty. And <laughs> here we go, she's woven in. I did uh, weaving in of the ends as I was traveling to my mother's on the train. I find things that I don't always particularly enjoy doing. Um, if I bring them along with me on a car ride, on public transit, I have nothing else to do and I'm gonna keep my hands busy. So it allows me or forces me almost to do the thing that I might not do while sitting on the couch. And uh, then I feel so good because I get it done. I'm loving it. The designer is so gracious and already um, replied or commented, I should say on Instagram because I posted a pre-block on this and she said it looks so lovely, which my heart is delighted when the designers reach out. But even in addition, because I made the modification, that she still commented in such a lovely, positive way. And I really appreciate that. So that is the Bug of War Bleedy by Alison Randell. And I love it. It's stunning. Uh, Jameson to play, I didn't say, but there we go. Okay, next up. These you haven't seen. <laughs> you know, because we're knitters and we have an entire year to knit gift knits, why would we leave anything until the last minute? Okay, maybe the last week. Mm. This girl, last minute girl. So first of all, I've knit a headband for my mother. This is a pattern modified, of course, but is uh, the Frida, Frida headband. This is by Emily Louis or Lewis. Um, I think she's a French designer. I've used two strands of Instash yarn. This was actually scrappy yarn. It's one strand of um, Merino by Knitting for Olive, just that thin little guy. And um, sorry, two strands. <laughs> Hello, two strands of Knitting for Olive Merino. One's in like the dusty blue, one is in a cream. And I was just bebopping away. This is a double knit um, technique, which I've never done. And it is just super clean and satisfying. I mean, you're slipping stitches um, pretty much every other, you are slipping stitches every other um, stitch. This is a free pattern. Uh, but I ran out of yarn. <laughs> I ran out of yarn. Of course I did. I weighed, I weighed, I calculated, I reweighed on my scale and I, I thought I might just have enough. I did not have enough. Um, I had to go out. Um, I went on a run and I picked up another ball of Knitting for Olive in the cream color. The lot is different and it's yeah, it is showing up on camera too. Oh, this makes me sad. It's it's right here, of course, in the front where I've added in the new ball that was creamier or muddier almost than the original I had. And there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, the only thing possibly could be if I dipped it in like a light dilution of tea almost. I mean, this is crazy. This is where my brain goes to kind of like 
chill out the rest of the more stark white cream to make it match. I haven't had the guts to do it. I blocked it. I'm gonna kind of see what my mother, how she's gonna feel about it. It's a beautiful headband. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's where we are. That's the Frida headband. It's a quick knit. I'm happy to knit her a brand new one using the new skein, or sorry, the new ball, because I've got obviously a lot of the, um, the new lot left. And I'll just purchase another blue one even, or I don't know, we'll figure it out. But I wanted to give this with her Christmas presents to her, because I, I always give something I create, something I make. And um, I know she'll wear it, she's a headband girl. We went for a hike the other day when I trained in to town, and she was wearing the original headband that I made her in Drops. It was the original Drops Eskimo. Uh, they're calling it Drops Snow now. She was still wearing it. I mean, that was three years ago. My little heart, they were so happy. Anyway, that's the headband, Frida headband. Bye, Emily Lui. Now, last up on the finished objects is another last minute gift. This is for a girlfriend, another workout girlfriend, and I realized the brain hat is for one of the workout girlfriends, other girlfriend I always knit something for, usually had or something going on this time. It slipped my brain um, until this week, and I was like, oh, great. Uh, we need to get a knit on, and I made boop, um, a pair of my favorite fingerless gloves. No pattern. This is designed by me and they are just the most simple of little glove mittens you can imagine. It is all stock net stitch with a little hole for your thumb and it's just, you know, they're just cute. They're fun. They're fun to knit. I've knit, I think, so many friends and family members these uh, little mittens and they're just like, they're just a little extra looks cozy or even texture. Um, before I lost one of my leather gloves, I loved wearing leather gloves and then putting these over top as like a really beautiful, like little piece over top and warmth. Um, I knit these a little longer than I've knit in the past for my friend. I think she would really enjoy the length. They make, I feel like it's a little more like Luke's. Um, this was in a scrappy yarn, believe it or not. This is a uh, Stella Lama Natural Chunky. Took no time to knit up and I think she's gonna love them. They're neutral. She's trying to get more into the neutral train. They're squishy, they're fun. It will pill because it's really soft, but that's fine. I mean, and even if anything happens to them, whole wise or whatever, no problem. I'll mend them for her. Those are my favorite fingerless gloves. All right, we're gonna do one acquisition, one. Um, it is matching the sparkly train and I'll bring them up here. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get this. Oh, this is just showing up to be a sheer delight. These are two gifted to me skeins, which I'm thrilled about from the knitting loft. Uh, Bruna, the owner, one of the owners, Marie and Bruna that are the founders of the Knitting Loft here in Toronto. It's gorgeous, gorgeous yarn shop. Um, they have gifted these skeins to me and I feel so thankful and lucky. They are fun, they are loud, they are sparkly. I chose this ridiculous pink color because we are in the depths of winter. This is the brightest we have had, I feel, in like two, three weeks. And I need fun. I need color. This is color. Um, this, before I forget, sorry, is by the Knitting Loft. It's their own yarn from them. Um, it is the Starlight. It is um, an 80% superwash shankle wool, a 20% stolina. It is 288 meters, 316 yards. And for 100 grams, you're looking at about a 24 stitch gauge, which they're classifying as a sport weight. Um, this shade is electric pink. I feel like <laughs> it's so electric. I have a really clear idea of what I want to knit on. 
I'm gonna keep it to myself right now because I feel like if I say it and then change my mind, it's like, mm, that's not what she said. So I'm keeping it to myself. I have a very clear picture of what I wanted it. And then you will be able to see it. I wanna cast this on during the holidays so much. And I think I can because my gift notes are done. They're getting gifted within days. So that's happening. Oh, I'm just like, I feel hot. I feel like electric pink right now. That's amazing. Okay, so excited and thank you so much to Bruna, Maria, and all the lovely staff that have been knitting loft. Okay, well, with that being said, folks, here we go. So I will leave you to knit as you wish, sip, enjoy. I've got a little like holiday tunes coming up with all the little things I've been doing, visiting the distillery Winter Village, which was the Christmas market originally of Toronto, um, baking, creating gift wrap. I mean, I have been fully enjoying the holidays here and I hope you enjoy with me. I will be seeing you again shortly before the year's over. Um, I have some very clear visions of what my next video, uh, videos I should say, will look like for 2023 before closing up until 2024. So I wish you a lovely holiday season. I hope that you find joy in your knitting today and joy in an activity you do, be it with other people, solo, but something that you are enjoying yourself. I invite you to like and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the podcast and I thank you very much for that. And in addition, if you are willing, I also invite you to go and click below on the Ko-Fi page, visit my Ko-Fi page there and consider purchasing a holiday coffee for me. Thank you very much and we shall see you soon. Take care.